Hello YouTube. Bane666 here. Welcome to my second video debunking XY feminists male privilege list. If you haven't watched the first part, you should probably watch it first, link below. Anyway, let's get stuck into it, because we have a lot of crazy to get through. Oh no. The fucking wage gap again. Let's put this myth to bed once and for all. Men are not paid more than women. Men earn more than women. There is a difference between being paid more and earning more. If you have two people doing the exact same job, at the exact same level, and are paid the exact same wage per hour, and one does 10 hours a week overtime, the one doing overtime earns more. Women are more likely to do part-time work due to kids, and their male partners are more likely to do additional overtime due to kids. In some countries, like here in Australia, males also retire later. The other major factor causing the gap is choice of occupation. But don't take my word for it. With that, but you would also have to agree that generally speaking, women are paid less, for example, for the same jobs as men. No, I would not. I would not agree with that. If you're talking about women with the same number of years of experience, with the same continuous service, etc., etc., then when I look at that, I don't find that disparity. I find, for example, in many cases, the women are making more, depending on how you break the data down. The difference with women is between unmarried is between married women and everybody else. That's the real difference. First of all, no competent labor economist takes the 23 cent wage gap injustice claim seriously. There was an analysis of more than 50 peer-reviewed papers commissioned by the Department of Labor. What they found is that the so-called wage gap is mostly, perhaps entirely, an artifact of the different choices men and women make, different fields of study, different professions, different balances between home and work. Now, wage gap activists will argue that even when you control for relevant variables, women still earn less. Well, it always turns out they omit one or two crucial variables. So why play this game? can mean part-time work or full-time work. Women do not work full-time to the same extent that men. Part-time workers make less than full-time workers. Now, it is not my claim that women no longer face discrimination in the United States. There, there is no evidence that I can see, or most responsible economists can see, of systemic wage discrimination against women. But of course, there are still workplaces where women are being shortchanged. But here's the bottom line. Women who are struggling economically or, or coping with gender bias, they're going to be best served by truth, careful research, not hype, spin, factoids, advocacy data, will all be better served by truth. So the White House, members of Congress, journalists, and everyone else should stop using the specious wage gap statistic. Just let it go. By the way, it's been against the law in the USA to pay someone less based on their gender since 19-fucking-63. Why are we still hearing this bullshit 50 years later? If you are a woman being paid less based on your gender, and nothing else, take your employer to court, it's that simple. Oh and by the way, similar laws exist right across the western world. The wage gap is just more feminist propaganda, designed to make women think they are oppressed in ways they are not. Here's the deal ladies, if you want to earn, notice I used the word earn, if you want to earn the same amount as males, you had better start applying for mining jobs and you had better be prepared to work a lot of overtime. Because no one owes you more money, for less work. Hey, if you want to start up a women-only mine, I will support you 100%. Next. Yeah, I think I just covered this. I do not normally support gender-segregated workplaces, but would gladly make an exception for female-only coal mines. Come on ladies. Put your hands up as positions will go fast. It's just one big party down there you know. You might even get a souvenir, like black lung. 
and I would love some examples of fields that have started paying less once women have dominated them. Anyone? If you know any, please comment below. Next. What can I say about this one? Those poor, poor younger women, who are forced to marry older successful men, then divorce them and take half their money. Does the evil patriarchy have no limit? Yeah, women are only ever all smiles towards men. Next. Men are allowed to be bald? Whereas women must wear wigs? Did someone pass a law without telling me? It is true that a bald woman will get more strange looks than a bald man. And do you know why? Because it's fucking rare to see a bald woman. Trust a feminist to take something that affects males more than females, and somehow turn it into female oppression. I do not doubt that many men are fine with their baldness, but others are clearly not. I'll tell you what, I can't believe it. You know, I've seen the commercial, and I, I, I just couldn't believe it. And it really looks great. My wife's got herself a new guy now, and I'll tell you, I'm really impressed. That's incredible. I've been getting harassing for being bald, and I'm only a young man. No more dates without being called old man, but the babes are back. Once again, statistically, men work longer hours, on average, than females. Working overtime every week to pay the bills is not leisure time. Next. More bullshit. Women have female-only gyms, swimming pools and even restaurants. The Boy Scouts were even forced to take girls, yet the girl guides are not required to take boys, as girls should have their own space. If there is a male-only space in a home, often a shed at the end of the yard, it's because the rest of the house is controlled by the man's wife. I am not saying it's the case in every home, but we all know more than a few cases I am sure. Uh, this be me man shed. Now some people do ask me, what are these men sheds all about? Well some people call them man caves. But all hinges around the name man, doesn't it? Well what they are, they're little retreats, aren't they? That's where you can go to get away from it all, and it mainly you're indoors, you know, your wife and all the rest of it. Well, you go in there, and you do whatever you want to do. I don't see how a man retreating to a shed in the backyard, to have some personal time to unwind and think, is female oppression. If anything, it's good for his mental health. Next. By this I think he means, ask questions and point out fallacious arguments. It seems that any time a male, especially a white male, doesn't agree with something a feminist has said, he is somehow using his evil patriarchy's superpowers of oppression to silence her. But when a feminist comments to a male, especially a MRA or MIGTO, she can say whatever she wants, including ad hom attacks. Let me make it simple, if you are an adult, and want to take part in adult conversations, then act like one. If someone disagrees with you and your feelings are hurt, because not everyone thinks the way you do, then too fucking bad. Grow up, or fuck off. Those are the two choices. And if your belief system is so weak and flimsy, that it can't stand up to questions, then maybe you should choose something else to believe in. And that doesn't go just for feminists, that's for everyone. Next. Radfems must have to do years of yoga to be able to fit their heads so far up their own arses. I have discussed this in past videos, so will not go into great detail here. 
but women are less likely to be convicted, or less likely to get a long sentence, if convicted, compared to men charged with the same crime. Next. Here we go again. Male politicians do not only represent males, and female politicians do not only represent females. A politician represents their electorate. Everyone, within that electorate. Their color, race, gender, shoe size or favorite type of pizza topping should not matter. The gender of the politician is irrelevant. Or at least it should be. To many feminists it seems to be the most important factor, or possibly the only one. Next. I'm guessing the XY feminist has never been on Tumblr. I shouldn't have to point this out, but unfortunately I do. Disagreeing with feminism, or feminists, is not the same as hating all women. This is really fucking simple to understand, but for some reason very few feminists seem to get it, another point I shouldn't have to make, but will. Pointing out that women are capable of violence, sexual assault, rape, murder or lying, does not mean you hate all women. It simply means that you see women as equals, and hold them equally accountable for their actions as you would a male. In other words, if you do something shitty, and someone holds you accountable, you shouldn't get a free pass because, vagina. Criticizing a single woman for doing something wrong, also doesn't mean you hate every woman on the planet, it simply means you are criticizing a single woman for doing something wrong. Thus ends the lesson. Next. I would challenge the 90% of violent criminals are male, quote. You will notice, once again, no citation by XY feminist. It is true however that over 90% of the jail population is male. But let's consider something I mentioned earlier. Men receive sentences that are 63% higher, on average, than their female counterparts. Females are also less likely to be arrested or convicted. Given that men are more likely to be arrested, convicted, and receive a longer sentence, would that not mean that, logically, there would be more males in jail? The study from the University of Michigan Law School also indicated that African Americans are more likely to be arrested, convicted, and receive a longer sentence than their white counterparts. Could this not be a contributing factor as to why there is such a large African American population in jail? XY Feminist has two choices here. He could admit discrimination in the legal system towards men, in particular black men, thus explaining not only the high number of males in the U.S. jail system, but also the high number of black males, as the University of Michigan study would suggest. Or he could argue that males are naturally more violent, which by extension would suggest that African Americans are naturally more violent than whites. This of course would not only make him sexist towards males, but also a racist, who believes some races are naturally more violent than others. Of course, he will probably try to take some kind of middle ground, and agree with the study when it says that African Americans are discriminated against in the legal system, but ignore the study when it says males are discriminated against in the legal system. For the record, the study shows, that out of black males, white males, black females, and white females, the group that is most likely to receive a lenient sentence, or not even stand trial, is white females. You know, the same white feminists that make up the core of feminism and claim constant oppression. Next.
An interesting fact is, 79% of all murder victims in the U.S. are male. If the vast majority of homicide victims are male, how exactly is murder a male privilege? XY Feminist also claims that domestic homicide is the fourth leading cause of death amongst adult women. To examine this, I will be using a chart from the webpage called, WorldLifeExpectancy.com, specifically their, USA Life Expectancy page, which uses statistics from the CDC. If we look at females aged between 15 and 24, we do in fact find that homicide is the fourth biggest killer of females. Please note that this is all homicides, not just domestic homicides. But let's compare it to the same male age group. We see that homicide is the second biggest killer of males between 15 and 24. What about the age group 25 to 34? We see homicide ranked fourth for both males and females. And 35 to 44? Homicide is no longer in the top four for females, in fact it's dropped to number 14. It's also dropped for males, from 4 to 5. It's interesting to note that in this age bracket the biggest killer of males is suicide. Suicide was also in the top four in the two previous age brackets for both males and females. With the exception of the male 15 to 24 group, suicide is a greater killer of both males and females than homicide. After the 35 to 44 age group, homicides dramatically drop for both males and females. So let's look at the overall figures for both genders. The biggest killer of both males and females is coronary heart disease. This means you are more likely to die from eating too much of this, than from this. Suicide is ranked 27 for females and homicide is ranked 35. And with males, suicide is ranked 7 and homicide is ranked 27. So both genders are more likely to take their own lives, than be murdered and males are more likely to commit suicide or be a homicide victim than females. It kind of makes you think that the patriarchy, a system that is meant to systematically help men, and oppress women, isn't really working that well. Of course a better explanation could be, patriarchy theory is bullshit. But what about the other claims made by XY feminist? Well I kind of agree, that women are more often than not portrayed as the murder victim in TV shows, books, movies etc. But is this female oppression and male privilege? Let's look at it from another angle. These same TV shows, books and movies portray males as the violent perpetrators of these crimes. Can we seriously consider males constantly being portrayed as murderers, rapists, pedophiles and violent thugs, as a positive? This is the same dynamic feminism uses by the way, it constantly portrays males as evil victimizers, and females as helpless victims. XY Feminist does this exact thing while making his point about male privilege. I have to laugh at the irony. He makes the point that society hides violence against women, and then himself hides violence against women. It's kind of hard not to laugh. But why are the majority of murder victims in TV shows, books and movies female? Is it because society doesn't value female life? If this were the case, then there would not be much drama in the work of fiction would there? I mean, who cares if the detective solves the case of a murder victim that is unvalued or uncared for? On the other hand, what if the victim has a high value in the eyes of society? Would the work of fiction not then be more dramatic? Would the audience then not have more emotional investment in the story? What I am suggesting is the high number of female victims in fiction is the result of society being more invested in the safety of females, not because they are weaker than men, but because they have higher value. In other words, it would be ludicrous to see this as a male privilege, when clearly it's an indicator of the higher value society places on females. Next. Oh no. It looks like someone has been watching too many feminist frequency videos. That stuff will rot your brain. Once again, no citations to suggest where this bullshit came from. What is the reasoning behind thinking that boys spend more time on family computers than girls? Once again, is this also the case in families with a single mother, only female children, 
or two lesbian parents? In these environments are boys still getting more computer use than girls? Looks like more statistics just made up out of thin air. Next. Mundane accomplishments? You mean like the mundane accomplishments of Charles Darwin? Or the mundane accomplishments of Galileo? Or the mundane accomplishments of Martin Luther King? Or the mundane accomplishments of Mozart? Or the mundane accomplishments of Sir Isaac Newton? Or the mundane accomplishments of Gandhi? Or the mundane accomplishments of Einstein? Or the mundane accomplishments of Da Vinci? Or the mundane accomplishments of Sir Edmund Hillary? Or the mundane accomplishments of Tesla? Or the mundane accomplishments of Shakespeare? Or the mundane accomplishments of the Wright brothers? Or the mundane accomplishments of Bach? Or the mundane accomplishments of Bean 666AU? Sorry, I couldn't resist that last one. It's true, that not all men are great, because, not all people are great. We cannot all be Einstein. But you can't possibly diminish the contribution to human history and development played by men, well, that is unless you are a rad femme. I am guessing in their eyes, Einstein was really a woman in disguise, to make it in a man's world, and Sir Isaac Newton ripped all his ideas off his sister. I shouldn't joke like that though. It will probably give them ideas. Well that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed my debunking of XY Feminist and his male privilege list of bullshit. The remaining points of his list will be featured after my credits. Feel free to visit his webpage and ask him for citations, I am sure he won't mind. Until next time folks, don't drink the poison Kool-Aid. Bye. <laughs>